Hello there, welcome aboard to another exciting journey on my channel. Today we are diving deep into the world of education, but with a twist. Think of it as a quest to revolutionize the way we learn right from the ground up. If you've been following along, you know we'll be dissecting the flaws in traditional education system. Hold on tight, because today we are taking it up a notch. We are talking universal principles, the kind that could change the game for learners everywhere. And guess what? We are bringing a secret weapon, Scrum Framework. Yes, that's right. This agile framework isn't just for software development. It's a powerhouse that can shake up education as we know it. So buckle up, because we are about to explore how Scrum can be the key to unlocking a brighter, more effective future for education. Let's dive in. So first is iterative learning. Scrum promotes iterative learning. So what does this mean? It means that you can continuously review and enhance your teaching methods through short cycles. It means that changes can be rapidly incorporated into the curriculum based on the student's feedback and new requirements. Let's see. A teacher introduces a new project-based learning approach for a science class. They ask students to collaborate on a real-world science experiment, emphasizing hands-on learning. So after the first phase of the project, the teacher collects feedback from the students about what worked well and what could be improved. And based on the feedback, the teacher decides to tweak the project structure by providing additional resources and guidance. And they also add more interactive elements to the experiment. So with these small adjustments, the students become more engaged and their understanding of the scientific concept deepens. The teacher continues to gather feedback and make further refinements resulting in an iterative learning process that leads to improved educational experience. And this is one of the way Scrum can assist us in making our teaching more interesting and engaging for students. Here's another one. Collaboration. Collaboration is the heart of Scrum. By involving students and depending on your environment, by involving students and depending on your environment, potentially other stakeholders such as uh, parents, other teachers, school administrators, policymakers, business community, we can create an environment where evolving needs are openly discussed, understood, and effectively addressed. So let me share our high school science project example, and then you can leave your thoughts in the comments, okay? So in this scenario, students are tasked with creating a sustainable gardening system. The teacher, in collaboration with the students, holds regular meetings to discuss project progress, identify challenges, and brainstorm solutions. They also invite the local horticulturists to provide the guidance and expertise. They set up Scrum board, defining tasks like a research plant species, building the garden structure, managing water and care, each student takes on specific responsibilities with these tasks and they work together to achieve the, their goals. Through this collaboration, the students actively discuss their project's implementation needs, adapt to changing circumstances like weather conditions affecting their garden, and address issues by adjusting their plans. Their collaboration ensures that they not only complete the project successfully, but also develop valuable teamwork and problem-solving skills. Feedback integration. Scrum places great emphasis on feedback, empirical feedback. By actively seeking and incorporating feedback from students and stakeholders, educators can ensure their teaching aligns with the current educational requirements. One of those, one of my uh, close colleagues, who is uh, also a university professor, uses Scrum in software engineering class. 
Through the semester, he regularly collects feedback from students after each major project or assignment. The students provided com comments on what worked well and what was challenging and what they would like to see differently in the next project. And then he uses this feedback to make a real-time adjustment to the course. For instance, if students mentioned that they found the specific programming concept particularly confusing, he schedules additional review session and if needed provides more practice practice problems to clarify that concept. If students express a preferences for certain learning materials or teaching methods, they incorporate those preferences in the upcoming topics. It's really amazing how this works well after a little practice. And it can work for you too. All you need to do is to focus your energy in this direction. And the best thing is that he is actively seeking and integrating feedback every, even today. I just spoke to him a few days ago and he said he believes in a feedback-driven approach. is the only way to ensure the course aligns with students' current learning needs. Adaptability. Scrum's adaptability and focus on delivering value aligns seamlessly with the needs to develop practical, real-world skills. This means that you can shift their approach to emphasize hands-on learning and skills development, ensuring that students are ready for ever-changing world. Let's say you are a teacher, a biology class, and you are presented with a choice. Stick to a traditional lecture style, style curriculum or introduce hands-on learning and adapt the course to current real-world challenges. So, could you please share in the comments which option would you believe create more valuable outcomes for your students? Okay, please share your thoughts. Since you've made it this far, I assume you are considering the second option. Creating will creativity will liven up your class. So in this situation, everyone in the class works together to find a problem they care about, like a pollution in nearby water that they want to solve. And using Scrum principles, the teacher guides the students through a project. They research the issue, design experiments. Okay? They test water quality, collaborate with local environment organization, and even present their findings at the community meetings. It's amazing. It's amazing. The course content, initially designed around the standard curriculum, adapts to incorporate these real-world problem-solving experiences. As a result, students not only learn biology, but also develop practical skills in the research, data analysis, and community engagement. The adaptability of Scrum allows the teacher to pivot the curriculum to align with the current issues and provide students with hands-on, real-world learning experiences, so they are better prepared for the outside world. So, as you've witnessed, these are just four simple illustrations of how Scrum can make a difference in education. But there are countless more possibilities. By embracing Scrum principles in education, we can revolutionize traditional classroom, turning them into flexible, dynamic learning environments that are exceptionally equipped to meet the evolving educational requirements of our students. Okay? And that's it for this lecture. If you have any questions, thoughts or concerns, please share them in the comments. Oh, no, no, no.